Hello everyone. Welcome to our data at scale session on composable data management. I'm Amit Prohit and I will co-present the session with Pedro on how we are evolving our data stack for future needs. The data industry has changed significantly in the last 50 years. Data stores were invented in 1960s, but 70s is when we saw transaction systems emerging. This change has evolved for many reasons, but the biggest one is that our customer needs have evolved continuously. As the needs evolve, engineering teams around the world build systems to address them. Years ago, online transaction systems were a critical thing. But in order to extract the data out of those transaction systems, we built analytics use cases. And then to access the data faster, the need increased to become real-time analytics and streaming. The latest to this addition is Gen AI. This means that data infrastructure has to evolve continuously to support the innovation and changing requirements. This slide has an example of existing workloads. They were different five years ago. They are definitely different from that, and they're different. They will be different in five years from today. The speed of innovation has definitely helped our customers, but also created these verticals and in turn giant monoliths which is the root cause of our fragmentation challenge. As engineers, this required a lot of plumbing as data moved between these systems and we need to spend time and money to engineer that plumbing. This all meant that we were continuously rebuilding rather than reusing. Now, I'm not saying that in order to solve this problem, we just converge. Convergence is hard, complex, costly, and is not the only solution. We're basically trying to plain and simple, efficiently run these systems at scale and continue to innovate. Now, it's not just a problem for our industry. Auto industry went through a similar transformation in the last few decades, where they leveraged sharing and reusing every part of the car, starting from windows, mirrors, seats, batteries, braking systems. So it is doable, but saying this in a presentation is much easier than actually doing it. So what have we discussed so far? Customer needs have evolved rapidly and continuously. This has created these verticals, but also monoliths with little or no reusability. This fragmentation increases cost. On one hand, the increased engineering cost. Look at SQL dialects being incompatible between engines. So people have to do a lot of juggles to move their workloads. And engineers are doing a bunch of work in plumbing rather than innovating. And that's not all. This leads to compute costs for businesses going high, super high. We are talking about millions and millions of dollars in every company every year. That can't be efficient for anyone. All this felt like early 90s for big data systems. And that's what triggered us a few years ago to see if there's a better way to do all this. Well, there is. So the way this generally works in our team is that I create all the problems and then Pedro comes in and fixes them. So Pedro will cover what we've been doing at Meta to address the problem of fragmentation and improve efficiency for compute infrastructure. Over to Pedro. All right. Thank you, Amit. I'm Pedro. I'm a software engineer at the compute team at Meta. And I'm here to talk a little bit more about the approach we took to make sure we could continue scaling our data organization while getting resource savings in return. So in this talk, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the concept of composability in data management. Then I'll describe one of the main projects we have on the space called Velox, and I'll hand over to Amit for discussing next steps. So the idea of composability in data management started with the Share Foundation project, which was something we started about four years ago inside Meta. But the ideas of Shared Foundation was threefold. First of all, we had too many systems focused on different workloads. So the idea was to, as much as we can, consolidate them into fewer systems that are just more manageable from the organizational side. Of course, we knew that we couldn't consolidate all those systems for the places where we actually needed specialized systems. The idea was to build reusable components that could be, could be shared across those systems. And as much as we could, we tried to build those systems and those APIs based on open standards. So this program eventually evolved into what we call the composable data management system today, where the idea is that data management systems in the industry should be developed less vertically and more horizontally. Right? So with this idea that we should build more APIs, more libraries, and more components that can be reused across those systems, so we developed fewer of them. So, of course, the idea is that if we develop fewer components, we can spend a lot more time optimizing them, so we usually get efficiency gains. 
but, but also the idea is that with fewer components, we need to do, invest in cheap, fewer projects so we can develop a few components and share them across different silos so we, we, have, we improve our engineering efficiency. But also the idea is that if we have fewer components, we can also provide a more, a more consistent user experience for our users. So for further reading, the idea, initial idea about shared foundations was published at CIDR in 2023. And this new vision of composable data management systems was published at BLDB 20, in 2024. In this paper, we made the observation that even though those systems are specialized and vertically integrated, if you really look at what they're doing inside, they're, very, they're usually very similar. So they're all composed of the same logical layers. So each one of those systems has some sort of language layer that is able to take some input SQL query or a data frame program or some kind of DSL, parse that and translate that into an intermediate representation. All those systems have some sort of optimizer that can take this internal representation and generate another one that is more efficient for execution. All of them have some sort of execution library that is able to execute this internal representation given the resources uh, given by the execution runtime environment. We also made this obs the observation that this model is pretty general. So you can look at every single data management system in the industry, and all of them are composed of the same set of layers. In some systems, the, those, some of those layers might be a little more developed. Some of them, they, they might be a little less sophisticated. But all of them are composed of the same layers. And not just that. So this model is not just general, but they're predominantly the same. So if you look at SQL parsers between transactional and analytic systems, like they might not be exactly the same, but they're, they're by far mostly, mostly the same. Same thing for execution engines. Like they're not exactly the same, but they're very, very similar. So the idea of composable data management systems is that we should focus on the similarities or we should focus on what those systems do, which are the exact same, rather than, the, rather than just focus on the fact that they, they have some differences and then just developing everything from scratch. Right? So the idea is just trying to unify everything that is similar and provide extensibility APIs so that specialized behavior can be added and can be integrated into the system. So the part is that this is all great, like all those systems are composed of the same layers, but what do we do about this? So there are a few reasons why this is important. So the first one is that those systems are constantly evolving, as Amit said. So in the future, as those systems evolve, we can, if we already have reusable libraries that we can just assemble, like we're going to be able to move much faster in the future. But not, not just that, for, even for existing systems, we know that refactoring those systems and making efficiency improvements, is, it's expensive for the organization. Like a lot of engineering costs goes into that. But if we could do that in a more reusable manner, like it would also make, uh, help us reduce the cost as we make those optimizations, right? So we actually we took a bold step and say, instead of continue optimizing those systems individually, let's actually try and try to develop that as a reusable component that can be integrated with all the systems. And of course, the idea was that we want to develop fewer components, hopefully just one, and then kind of multiply the, the returns we, we get over that. So this is how we got to Velux. And of course, if we're optimizing something, we want to optimize where most of the time is spent or the place that took most of the resources, which is the execution engine. So Velux is a project we started to address this specific problem. So Velux is a new execution engine that we created about 2022. The idea is to create a new state-of-the-art C++ library that can centralize our investment and multiply them. So we created Velux in 2022. It was open source in 2022. And we've been seeing a really fast community adoption. So up to this day, we see more than 200 individual con contributors uh, across the community and more than 20 companies working with us and collaborating with us in, in developing Velux. So, so it's already comprised of a kind of really large open source community. And the vision behind the project is really to commoditize execution in data management. So giving you a little more details about Velux. So Velux is a C++ execution engine developed as a library. And this is different from being a full-blown database management system. So the idea is that Velux doesn't have a language layer. It doesn't have an optimizer. So all the what Velux does is taking a fully optimized execution plan and executing it locally with the resource you have available in your host. So that's essentially what you do. You take a, a fully optimized query plan, and then the engines integrating your Velux are responsible for providing a language layer, for providing an optimizer, and for providing the runtime environment. So Velux is fully extensible. It was meant to be reusable. So we developed Velux from scratch with this idea of coming up with the right APIs that can be reused across those systems. 
We like to say that Velox is engine agnostic, so you can reuse Velox in many different, different engines, but it's also dialect agnostic. So you can extend Velox in multiple ways to follow different semantics from, SQL, from, from different SQL dialects. So you can add different data types to Velox. You can add new function, scalar function, aggregate functions. You can add new operators. So the library is fully extensible. You can tweak them to follow the specific behavior you're looking for. So Velox in itself is also modular. So the, Velox has, the, the library has many different components. At the core of everything, there's a column, columnar layout component, which is compatible with Apache Arrow. There's an expression evaluation component that lets you execute expressions on top of this columnar layout data. There's SQL operators, uh, and there's many more. So Velox is currently integrated with many systems inside Meta. The two main integrations are, one, Prestissimo, which is the idea of integrating Velox inside Presto. And then the community also created the project Gluten, which provides a way to run Velox query plans inside Spark. So from those two systems, they provide the exact same user experience. So you can still express your queries using Presto SQL and Spark SQL. You just notice that your queries will run faster. So those are the two main integrations. But inside Meta, we also use Velox in many other different contexts. So we use Velox in feature engineering. We use Velox in many places in the real-time data infrastructure, in database ingestion, data warehouse ingestion, and even in the log process on the log messaging pipe. We also have a new time series database developed based on Velox, and, and there are many more integrations. These are just a couple of examples of how Velox is helping us improve the cost and making more efficiency gains in our internal workloads. So on the left side, I show some results for Prestissimo. Uh, so it shows a comparison between the original Presto Java stack versus Prestissimo, which is the, the Presto uh, version running on top of Velox, and it shows the average speed up we're seeing from production queries. So those are actually production workloads. So we usually see about 3x performance gains as we move things from the Java stack to C++. Uh, on the right side, there's some numbers provided by our partners from Intel. So it shows numbers from both TPC8 and TPCDS and shows about kind of the same level of performance gains. Like you can see that we also gained 3x in some of those synthetic benchmark results. To get all those performance efficiency gains, we really leverage in three main data processing techniques. The first of them is just vectorization, which is this idea of decomposing larger computations into smaller and really concise loops that can be more efficiently executed in modern hardware. So the idea is just trying to minimize CPU stalls and trying to provide a really nice and, and, and more memory-friendly access pattern. Second one is compressed execution. So Velox is based on columnar layout, and all of those layouts provide different ways to encode the data, like dictionaries, constants, RLE, frame of references, and, and whatnot. So the idea is that we can actually leverage the data encodings to provide a more efficient execution path. Not just that, but even as you execute operators, you can also generate compressed data in many cases. Right? So kind of just kind of playing with this fact that data is encoded, you can generate encoded data, and in many cases, you can provide a more efficient execution. And that, lastly, this idea of adaptivity, which is usually when executing a query or a query plan, you're doing the exact same computation over many, many batches of data. So you can actually learn from the execution of previous batch to try to optimize your, the, the future execution of new batches. Right? So we use that in many different places. You can use that to reorder filters and reorder conjuncts. You can you use that to kind of guide your prefetching from the remote I.O. and many other different places. So in summary, the, a lot of engineering efforts and, and investment goes into optimizing your systems. But at least with Velox and with the composable data stack, we can do that in a more reusable and a more composable manner. And with that, I'll hand back to Amit. All right. Thanks, Pedro, for an in-depth analysis of Velox and how we are evolving our data stack to meet the needs of the future. So we started this talk about how customer needs are evolving rapidly. This created spatialization, but also created monoliths. All this led to data management compute costs rising significantly high over the years. To reduce the cost, we started investing in Velox as a key pillar of our composable data system story and as an execution engine. As Pedro stated, this has already given us 2 to 3x efficiency over many different workloads. So is that it? Well, not really. We want to innovate in other layers in parallel. Parquet has been a de facto standard for a large part of decade on file formats. 
but we believe there's significant opportunity to save compute costs and storage costs in future through another file format. We call it Nimble. We recently open source Nimble as well. Nimble is more efficient for training tables and we believe Nimble is critical for data warehouses of future. Why do we say so? Well, because it's fast, extensible, and efficient. Fast, because it can leverage parallel hardware. Extensible, because it decouples stream encoding from the underlying physical layout of the tables. And efficient, because it is built for workloads with white tables, which is generally found in feature engineering and training tables. So we can say that Velox is changing the cost structures already. Everyone wants a 3x cheaper workload. And with VLOX, we are consolidating at the software layer. But is that all what we can do? No, we believe there's more innovation possible. In order to reduce the cost to as low as physically possible, we need to get to hardware acceleration. We need to combine software plus hardware, and we believe we can go up to another 10x efficiency for our workloads. 10x on top of already 3x efficient improvement. That could be massive for big data industry. Now, this isn't one of those science fiction things. This is real and in our sight in the next three years. But this will require our industry to come together to consolidate at the software layer, which is already happening with VLOX and hardware layer. We already see Intel integrating with Gluten, and we see other hardware vendors like Neuroplay integrating VLOX natively. So this is happening but we need to work together as an industry to make this future real and soon. And if we can pull this together, we will enable some of the most critical customer scenarios, including Gen AI, in a cost-efficient way and not create more fragmentation. I, for one, am super optimistic about this future, and with Meta, we are excited to contribute towards this future. Thank you all for watching.